and that's why we are bringing up this class because there's some things that we might know already but this class wants to remind us and bring to our knowledge some things that we might need to pay much more attention to and our speaker today is our media manager mr mj success so all right before we go into the session let's have a short prayer our father in heaven we thank you for today lord we are thanking you for the gift of life lord for the grace oh lord to be able to breathe to smile to eat to laugh lord god we say thank you our father in heaven you brought us here for a purpose we ask oh lord that you send the holy ghost to teach us that every single thing that shall be spoken of today we shall have understanding of it Amen. thank you heavenly father in jesus name we have prayed Amen. this session is declared open in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost amen, amen. hallelujah amen. all right so with a clap of ovation let's welcome our speaker mr mj success Okay, I want to welcome everybody for coming around once again this morning. I also want to welcome people who are watching us live right now for our business proclamation masterclass. Thank you for staying with us and thank you for joining us. So today um, we have been trying as much as possible to carry everybody along because of time, and that's why we have been waiting. But if I'm to stick to the plan I have very very soon. The plan I want to effect, which is more of going live, <laughs> you might end up coming here one day and we are done with our training mm -hmm. because of people um, we're trying to connect online and going live. So that's how we try we have to make sure we try to encourage ourselves to work with time, you know, time, every time. So today we're talking about effective follow up with prospects and clients. It's not going to be a long class. I'm going to try as much as possible to be fast. Prospects and client. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, let's start with the word effective. What is effective? Effective means something that you are doing and you are doing very, very well. Okay? You are not just doing it because you want to do it. Is this TV screen touch? <laughs> See, you're not doing it because you want to do it or because other people are doing it. You are doing it and you are doing it effectively. One challenge many of us has, and many people has, is that they tend to do something, the normal pattern, the normal status quo, and then they try to expect amazing results. It cannot work. You can't do that. Okay? So don't do things the normal way people are doing it and then expect excellent results. Observe people who are making sales, who are selling like water. People are making sales almost every month or, or you know, two months. Observe them and you study the kind of life they live. They are always doing some things effectively. So that's why I said effective follow-up with prospects and clients. Now, follow-up doesn't mean you are following them around. It means reaching out to them, carrying them along with new updates and new ideas. The world is prospect and what is client. client prospect has to do with people who are still you know, on the line to become clients, people who you are still talking to, they haven't patronized you yet, they haven't bought from you yet, like whether in real estate or anything that you are doing. Remember, I keep saying most of my teachings are beyond real estate. They also have to do with business, any other business you are doing at all. All these principles will help you. So, prospect are people who are still on the line, they are still on the pipeline, you are still trying to convince them, trying to tell them about your business. And then, clients are people who are already existing. Um, Customers, people who have bought from you, people who are still there. So these are your clients. So you need to manage both your prospects and then your clients. So that is why we're talking about effective follow-up. Many of us have been going for marketing, individual marketing, and you know, with team and all that. So since you are going for those domestic marketing, knowing about this effective follow-up will help you have a better result. By the time you combine your marketing and then you combine your follow-up, it will help you go a long way. Okay, 
So now what is follow-up in marketing? Let's talk about what is follow-up in, in marketing. So what is follow-up? Now, follow-up is the process of complementing an activity. So when it comes to business, especially when you need to acquire new customers, follow-up means turning prospects into customers. Remember talking about prospects. People are still on the line. They're just people you just met. They're still doing marketing to them. So follow-up in marketing means turning those prospects now into clients. Following those prospects up until they mature into becoming your customers and your clients. So that's what follow-up means in marketing. Now, the next one I have here is, let's talk about, let's talk about what is follow-up strategy? The strategy of follow-up. Now, a sound sales follow-up strategy is a great way to boost your revenues by selling more to existing customers and by getting referrals to new customers. That strategy for the follow-up is a way of boosting your revenues by selling more to your customers. Many of us feel by the time a customer or a client buys from us, that's, that's the day is over. That is just the end of the whole story. You can actually sell more to them. And then from there, have referrals to new customers when you have an effective follow-up strategy. So let's proceed. Now look at this. What is not the purpose of follow-up? Why do you need to follow up to your clients and prospects? Now the purpose of follow-up is to provoke a response from prospective customers and also remind prospective customers of the products that the company has offered. Look at the word, is to provoke a response from prospective customers and also remind them of the product the company has offered. Let me give an instance now. You go out for marketing, meet people, share your flyers with them, tell them about your product and then you leave them. You might not be able to remind them again if you don't call them or follow up on them. Now, following up on them is a way of provoking the awareness of, oh, look at what I was telling you that time, look at the video, look at this one. You are trying to follow them or bring back the awareness of that particular product. And that will lead to sales. So that's the purpose of follow-up. You're provoking them, you're provoking a response from them because many of them will lie dormant. There are people you give flyer today um, and you leave them, they will never go through it, even in two years. You have to follow up on them, get back to them, to remind them about what the company is trying to offer to them before they start seeing that this thing can actually make sense you know, to them. Now, I want to talk about five simple steps to follow up a prospect before a sale. These are five simple steps you need to follow up a prospect. Whatever business you are doing, if you follow these simple steps, these five steps I'm going to show you, it will lead you to actually closing a deal with that person. These are five simple steps. Now, after these steps, this, remember I'm talking about prospects. After this, I'm going to be showing you five steps also to follow up a client after a sale. Remember, this is a prospect before a sale. You have trying to make them to buy. So these simple steps will help you in knowing. And now, one of the things about the simple step also is that most times, I keep saying it over and over again, people don't like um, disturbance. You have to do it. These steps will show you how to do it, not in an annoying way. Because some people, by the time you disturb them, you just block your number, then you can't reach to them again because they think they feel you are disturbing them. Okay? So these are five simple steps. And then number one talks about decide between email and phone communication. Now, even beyond email and phone communication, you must determine this plan you have met, this woman you have met, which is the best way to communicate to this person. What's the best way? to meet this person's need or get his attention. What's the best possible means? What's the best possible ways? Just imagine what happened to me this morning. I have a client that I worked for on Sunday and then I sent her some videos yesterday. Now, amazingly, I called her this morning. Oh, hello, my whole person of videos I sent you. You know what she asked me? Oh, where the one that sent it? Now, she has finished exhausting those videos. She has finished watching it. But she, did not even, she was not even aware I was the one that sent the videos. It means that particular woman is not an effective client to follow up on WhatsApp or chatting. I remember even when I sent her a message, she had to call me. She always called me. So those people, it's wisdom for me to say that this person is a phone person. It's better I call this person than sending them a message because if you send a message here, it can eliminate it in December, they have not seen it. 
So you must determine, is it email or is it phone communication? Last time I was telling you about a particular topic, I, I shared why you need to use email sometimes to some people too. Because some people cannot pick your calls. Some people cannot repair your WhatsApp. It is email they might have to check. I, I, I made that video, I posted that video on my status about the teaching. And one of my clients who is in the US said the same thing to me. He said, this thing is true. Many people are angry with me because of this thing. Because and if they were, they, he was telling that his messages are always many, thousands, that he cannot even open them. That but he checks his email every day. And some of his friends think he's not being them, but he's angry with them. But he was saying that he cannot read all the home messages. They're just too much. People asking for money, people calling for this one. So most times, you, they, they, you fall under the umbrella of people asking for money while you are bringing business. So determine this particular person now. Where do I, does it mean I should go face to face? So you must check. If he's a banker, that means he's a busy person. If he's a pastor, that means he has counseling time. Use counseling time and go and meet him. Book your session, go and meet him for counseling, and tell him about real estate. So you must check which is the best communication means to get this person's attention. Is it phone number? Is it email? Is it one-on-one -on -one follow up? Is it which one at all? So try to check these things. Decide and know the best one. So that's why you have to also study your prospects, study them and know how to you know get to them. And number two I have there is you need to provide new and valuable information. That is why, as a consultant, coming here is very, very important. You must get valuable information. You must get valuable information you can provide to them. Some of them have been marketing to you for a long time. When the estate, for instance, now, Vatican Garden Estate, as about phase two, was sold out recently, these are people you send those kind of flyers to, or meet them and say, oh, that incident I was telling you about is sold out to. Let's be like, wow, so that means people actually bought this particular property. You know, this, this, Thing of I missed that property. This sense of ah, I, will, I wish I knew I would have bought. Then you have, to, you have a new one again. Better it's cheap, and I better key in now. They are showing they are actually making progress. So provide valuable information to them. I mean, even your proxy, your client that already bought from you, when there's an update in price, tell them that oh, okay, I could um, I remember one of my friends that bought a property in a particular estate that was last year. And then he told me he bought that, he bought that, he bought that property one point something. In it, one point something. So last time I was speaking with him, I was asking if he later bought that property. And he told me yes, that he bought it last year. If he, and if you see the way he was having this whole, this whole pride of telling me that the estate now is worth three million naira, that's what they're they selling now. You understand? So let me give your client that same update. Valuable. Oh, that estate you bought is now two point five. That it has increased. So you're giving them valuable information. You're following them up. This will help you to know how to provide even a new product for them to buy. Also, so make sure you get valuable information that will help them. Oh, they said there's increase in development living now. Um, you remember they said after this, after this, after um, 1st of October, development living will increase. So all these informations, circumstances, all these informations are valuable informations you need to give to them. If there is fencing projects going on, send it to them. Even though, even though they are prospects, there is a fencing project going on, send it to them. So, ah, this is going to come and buy. Fencing is going on right now. After the fencing, it will increase in price. Keep giving them valuable information. Now, apart from even about the estate, you can get that other information across their market fields, across their business areas, and send it to them. This will help you become relevant beyond just a marketer. You are becoming a solution provider to them. And at the same time, they will trust you in buying from you because you are providing valuable information to them. So these things are very, very important. And the next one I have there talks about don't follow up too often. You must learn to balance things. Even the Bible says, Proverbs 11 verse 1, a false balance is an abomination before God. No matter how you love to pray, no matter how you love, to, you love God, if you pray too much and pray, pray, pray without going to work, even God will be angry with you. Because you have, you know, you have failed to balance things up. You walk and you pray. You do that once too. So don't follow up too often. Don't make, don't, don't ever create an impression where prospects start seeing you as a disturbance. Don't ever try that. Don't ever try that. Don't ever do anything that will make people start seeing you. Ah, this guy is disturbing me. Also, learn when to hold your break and leave them for a while. 
one week, two weeks, you come back to them, like, alpha, alpha, are you still? But the thing is that you must make sure there's a vibe going on between you both of you. Okay? When I say, that's when you observe people, you say, just come back, these people are not actually interested in my products. They don't even care about what I'm talking about, so you just have to leave them. So don't follow up too often. Don't do it today, do tomorrow, next tomorrow. With the same person, they will get, they will get tired. They'll be like, why are you disturbing me? Okay, you're disturbing me. They'll get tired. And that's the problem. And this is where, this is where many people have missed it also. People who are actually asking people for help and for money, for instance, they, they tend to take advantage of people. Okay, because you called me or you called a social person and he sent you thank you when you were in need, you now still have to call him again when another day shows up. It becomes a disturbance. Even if you can say, okay, let me do it once in the year, anytime I have a need, let it, let it be two times a year. You give them time because by the time they now see that, oh, you are always coming back to me because I'm giving you, they end that process. So don't follow up too often. Give time, learn how to give people their space. People love to have their space, not people disturbing them, okay? And I, I keep saying this particular thing also, whenever you are taking the lead, whenever you're leading people in, in guiding them to come and invest or buy a particular product, always take note of, allow them to think they are the one leading. Because people don't want to feel or think you're the one really advising them to buy this particular property. Just share the idea to them, then allow them to buy into that idea. Allow them to key into that idea. Don't always be the one that wants to force them or convince them. Because you think, ah, oh, this guy, you think he wants to force me to this thing. So now the thing I have there is also be persistent just for a while. There are people you look at, you know that this man is interested. He, he actually is he's seeing the opportunity to buy into this estate. Now, some of them are having some discouragement. It might be discouragement of no allocation, discouragement of um, being scammed or wasting their money, or they don't have the money yet. This is where you need to be applied persistence. You know, try to encourage them, try to show them the new ways they can do it, try to do this. So this one is also very, very important. Being persistent, knowing how to encourage people. But like I said, you must make sure the person you are being persistent with actually wants an encouragement. Like their clients, the other time I was sharing about different types of clients, People from the green community, being energy that needs encouragement, they will ask you if they should buy, and you tell them yes, they will call their brother if they should buy, call their mother, their father, they will call everybody to make sure everybody is encouraging them to go ahead. If anybody ever says no, that's a problem. That's the problem. Even if they call Mr. Chidi and Chidi says go ahead, they will tell Chidi and say, remember, John Sarah should not buy you. That's the thing. They need that encouragement. So they will call John. John will say, don't buy. They will call Chidi. Chidi will say, oh, buy. And Chidi says, I should buy. But John says, I should not buy. She will say, no, no, don't worry. Buy, buy. They say, okay, since Chidi says, I should buy. John says, I should not buy. Let me call Obi. Obi, should I buy? They are looking for to so make sure they have this, these people to hold. You say, I should buy. You You say, I should buy. You say, I should not buy. So they need that encouragement. This is what you need to know how to apply wisdom. Know when to be persistent with them because their own now may not be money issue. It's like they are looking for why they need to buy and why they should buy. So be persistent, okay? Now, the last one I have there is use less formal channels to build rapport with prospects. Now, most people, um, depending on the kind of people you meet though, you must not follow up with um, formal channels. You can use less formal channels, okay? Like um, text message, thank God you have WhatsApp. Everything must not be true one kind of official proposal or one kind of official, you know, you have WhatsApp or have a text message, you can use the same way to follow up on them. And let me tell you where this one applies. You don't just, don't just be somebody that wants to focus only on your business. You will not, you will not build a connection. Because let me, let, me, let me tell you what I mean. Because many of us are just busy. I used to, I used to see it from my own view too. I'm, I used to imagine, okay, let's say I'm a client. I want to buy. Or even if I don't want to. Because most clients don't, don't know when they need to buy or if they're even meant to buy anything. So let's say I am here, and then I'm seeing your post, real estate, Vatican Garden Estate, this one, this one. I have, you have over 20 posts about estate. Those things are not showing me if I'm buying it. They're just boring to me. They're just boring. And then the only thing you come to my DM or to my inbox to do is just estate, estate, estate. We are not building a rapport. And we're not having a connection. 
I will only see you. I will only see you as somebody that is coming to advertise to me about buying, buying, buying. Learn how to use this normal less format. Don't be too serious. Sometimes when you see people you are trying to market to make some funny posts, reply them. Reply, comment on their posts, reply their status, laugh about it if it's something that's funny. Make sure that it's beyond this whole every time. Come and buy, come and buy. If we can talk about something else, if we can talk about P2B, worry, talk about something else. Let there be a connection, first of all. Because when there's a connection, there's a trust. And after a trust, it leads to sales. So don't always be the person that is always sticking to your business. It's only about real estate you are posting to the person. The person will just ignore you. Let there be another level of... That's why I have friends who are my clients that we are doing business. Then I, and beyond business, we sell other things we laugh about. We, still, we talk about football. We talk about other things. So they, 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 they just start seeing me beyond this whole business person. We're like friends online now. So they can recommend me easily. We can laugh about some other things. We can even joke. I, I, I remember the time I shared something. I have a friend, I know a client. Now I'm calling him a friend now because we are close online. I have a client who... That guy, he loves, when I, when I covered his wedding many years ago, <laughs> he was so funny. He loves wine. He loves so much wine. Even his best mom, come asked Alpha, I'm the telegram wine. In his, on his wedding day, he loves wine so much. So he loves drinking. So one day I saw a post, a very funny, funny, funny post of a baby that was crying. They gave him money, gave him this one, gave him biscuit. No, they gave him wine, instead laughing and took the wine. He started laughing and drank the wine. So that video was so funny. I sent him that video. He laughed. He listened to the guy. You know what I like. The guy laughed. He laughed so much. That was the connection we are building. You understand? Those things will make him remember me easily. If somebody, at that same period of self, he was recommending me to some people that were looking for my, my business. So these are the way you create connection. Because even most people are trying to market to, they're not ready to buy from us yet. So it's not their plan to buy. Okay? It's not as if they're planning to buy, but they might have people that want to buy. First, first of all, you have a prospect now. You are my prospect, and I'm marketing it to you. You might be buying into my idea, but at the same time, you don't want to buy because you don't have the money. But if you have a strong connection, you can have people that want to buy, and you recommend me to them because, ah, this guy, we are in good terms, we, we flow. And at the same time, because there's a connection going on beyond just marketing, they have a way of standing for you. I trust this guy. You know, this guy is good. This guy will deliver this thing for you. You start, you know, working towards referring you to other people. So use less formal channels. Don't go too serious with life um, every time with people. Create a connection. Create a bond. Uh, I, I don't, I've not seen any clients at all that I just left at the client zone. I bring them into the friendship zone. Because that is when they will not see you as somebody they should help by recommending you to other people. Very, very important. Very, very important. So this also has to do with you know being involved in their life, being involved in their personal life. Um, they have a funeral you attend. They have a birthdays you attend. Anything at all, Thanksgiving, just show that support of, oh, we are building something here. We are actually building something here. That's, that's how you see your network growing you know, and spreading rapidly. So now let's talk about five steps of effectively filling up after a sale, okay? Remember, we are talking about before a sale. Some things you need to do before you make the person to buy. Now, what if the person has successfully bought into your estate or bought into your product or buy into your investment? The things you need to do also to follow up with them to make sure there is sustenance in business. I tell people, um, okay, what keeps business is cash flow. Okay, there's cash flow coming in, so money is coming in, business is going and also what sustains business is referrals recommendation your client that's what sustains your business so that's that's how it is now let's talk about these five simple steps to effectively follow up with people after you must have made a sale or people who have you know put into your product now this is very very important send a note to say thank you there are so many little things that are not little. There are so many small things that we see as these things are small, but their impacts are so heavy. That is why we see it as common things. Well, those common things are not actually common. Their impacts are so heavy, very, very strong, and very, very powerful. Sending a thank you. I have a lot of people coming into my office, even if they come for inquiries. I send them thank you for coming. 
to make inquiries. They did not come to buy. Those things are seen as kissing the small. It doesn't matter. It matters. It has a way of showing. This is why your bank sends you happy birthday. These are the acts about your, your age. It's not as if they really want to know your birthday. But they want to save it. So when you have your birthday, they'll send you a message to show that they actually care about you. It's not about because you're investing money with them or you're putting money in there. They want to create a connection with you. On your special day, we all, we all are Fidelity Bank. We all, our first, our first bank is celebrating you. So they have people they employ for that. That thank you note, very, very powerful. So when they buy from you, I've, I've said over and over again, even if the company doesn't have incentive for the client, for instance, okay, but let's say for instance now, the company says if the client buys, we'll give them one bag of rice, or we'll give them this one of fun or whatever. You can develop that one from your own end. Let me use my commission and pay this partner to make sure I create a connection. You give them a particular gift. Oh, this is your gift for buying from our property. This is a gift for buying from our property. So sending that thing, some people do it through emails, invoice, and whichever way. But let there be a way of showing appreciation to clients, people who are coming for inquiries, people who, are, who people went for inspection. Even if people go for inspection, thank them for coming for inspection because they make they make out time because they, they, they show that they have interest for this thing. So send them that thank you of thank you for coming for the inspection. We hope um, you love what you saw. If you don't, if you have any complaint or any feedback. Feel free, we are available. It's sure that this people are actually really concerned about me. Okay? So sending a thank you is something very, very important. Thank you, thank you, thank you is very, very important. And the next one I'm talking about is check in. Check in. Now is it a good strategy to call clients a week or two after they sell and find out how everything is going? Are they happy with their purchase? How was the service they received? Do they have any questions? Don't, don't, but don't overdo it. The customer's time is precious, especially avoid trying to make a sale at this stage. Instead, listen to your customer's needs and opinions and try to resolve any issue they might have. Let me give you a particular example now. Imagine you sold, um, let's say you sold a laptop to me, you sell laptop. I sold a laptop to me and then I'm not having a good experience with that laptop. Maybe it's not serving me well. So let's say before you were the one bringing the laptop to me, to market to me, maybe showing me, I'll buy, buy, buy. And eventually I bought one of them. And then just imagine for six months I've not seen you. And I can't call you. Your phone is not going. Do you know, even if you sold the best laptop to me, I was still having this feeling of, this guy scammed me. That's why he ran away. That's why I can't get him on the phone. That's why he's not, he's not coming again. He ran away. Because most times, you might say something good. A state that is very good. Everything is fine. But your client is having issues from his own end, not really from your fault or even the company's fault. So checking in on them helps them to understand that, oh, this guy didn't actually scam me. He doesn't have any interior motive against me. For him to keep coming to me to make sure I'm fine. I mean, this guy, maybe I'm the one having these issues here. So learn how to check up on people. So, but imagine I was having that issue. And then this person still came to me. How far how is the laptop going? It means that I'm suffering. Oh, this guy, you're not aware that this laptop is no good. You're trying to also make sure I'm comfortable. So I cannot end up and oh, the laptop is no good. Please change or whatever. It shows that the person cares about the client, not just about selling. So learn to check in on people. Oh, how are you doing? This is why we call this is why this is why people get angry with church sometimes. You would not come in when I was sick. That's a checking in store. Even though they know him from the church, they were sick. Just want to, I have a friend, one of our, our youth uh, members in my church. She just, she traveled, you know, all of a sudden, nobody saw her. And the last time I saw her, I was like, I was like, you would not even come here, but you would not even know that I traveled. Yeah, I left in two months, two months. I told her, wait, well, my sister, it's possible that we may not, we may not notice that you are, you are in your absence, but we might think you are around. Maybe something happened, you're not just coming. But you, you told us, ah, I am traveling. We'll keep calling you to check up how far is your movement, how is your new location. So that's it. So checking in on clients have, is actually very, very important. What? When it was enough. It was enough. It's not me. First, as now, I'm not the leader. And honestly speaking, I am busy. And at the same time, it's not as if she's that relevant. Maybe she's heading a post or whatever that will make me notice that this person is not around. I may just feel, that's why I told her, and I was sincere. I was, I was like, I may just feel 
maybe it no come this week and it no come next week. Like because the, I don't know how to put it because exactly because you're not even that close for me to think that you're not you're not around. It, it, it will not be only be after a while. I'm not like oh I'm not seeing this person. What is she? Because I saw I said ah you don't think where have you been? That's why I told her. But I don't remember that ah I've not seen you for a while. But this is where actually leaders have that that platform of doing it very very well. Yes. Yes, fully in up. Exactly. Just for the person to know what you are doing. You don't know if they are sick. You understand? You don't know if they are sick. So sometimes call your client, ask them, how far what is going on? How is business? Is now at this point, remember, you are not calling because you want to start to them. Sorry. The call is not because you want to start to them. Because if you, if you have that mentality, you, you you look as if you are selfish. Okay? The call is not because you want to sell or whatever. The call is just to check up on them. What's going on? How is business? Oh, buddy, you told me you wanted to bring in this container. I have uh, that thing shows them that you are trying to be involved in their progress and in their life. This is why, you know, most people are actually wicked. Some people have not called you for six months. And then the day they are calling, they are calling to be you. Ah, this one happened. I fell down from the tree. Send me money. I didn't, I didn't. They don't even know what you are passing through. And then when meanwhile, some people also make that call to be you. They'll be as how are you? How is everything? Then they leave you tomorrow. You're not going and say, ah, this is why I haven't connected because I needed money. That's not good. So learn how to check in on people. Because people are important to you. Time with time, check up on them, know what they are doing. So make sure also to ask them. For instance, if it's about estate now, oh sir, they're in a good land. What's your plan about the land? Do you want to build very soon? Let me show, let me guide you on how to go about it. So making sure you get involved with them. Hope we are on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Next one we have there is now keep the lines of communication open. Like I was saying in my previous uh, slide, make sure your line of communication is open. You don't want to say something. It's only scammers that once they are done with business, don't scam in you. They go. You can't get them again. They are gone forever. So but you must make sure your line of communication is open. If there's any change, you lost your phone, you because you see, people can actually create negative impression on their mind. Even if you lost your phone or something happened to your number, look for a way of telling them, oh, please, I changed my number. That's why I'm calling you this new number now. Keep in touch with me anytime you want to keep me. Ask your clients for permission to communicate with them. Then send helpful information and advice based on their needs and interests. Focus on high value content such as guides articles or educational webinars. This is the phase of consolidating the trust between you and your client. So keep this line of communication very, very open. Send to them information they need and all that. Make sure they can get to you anytime they need to get to you. These things will help you and keep you in business even after the sales. Now, after you must have done with those three things, you can now start thinking about a second sale. Because even the first person that bought from you can still buy again. You understand? They can still buy again. As far as they're having, they've had this good experience with you, they can still come again. So think of a second sale. Talking to these clients who already bought might seem like a waste of time, but it's actually the key to future sales. Regular contacts will help you understand their needs, give you ideas about product improvements, and set the stage to offer a complementary product. By creating a relationship, you are going beyond a simple transaction and giving yourself an opportunity to offer more products or services to the client. So think about a second sale you can offer. But you can't achieve this if you have not been in touch. Imagine selling a property to me and for two years or one year, you have not even called me. The next time you are coming to me, to come and buy on that one. What kind of talk is that one? How selfish are you? You don't even know if I have money. You don't even know the one I bought if I'm having issues. I come to bring another one again. I okay, come and buy. People be like, you have seen cash dispenser now. So you must make sure you build that relationship and that communication. It will help you make these things easy. They may, they may even start asking you, okay, how far? Is there another one coming up? Any other one I can I have the money to buy? So this is where this second sale comes in. And then my last slide there talks about ask for referrals. Like I said, these referrals are the sustenance of business. This is what sustains your business. Other clients referring you, your customers referring to new clients, recommending new people to you. 
They have because see, see it as a way that when you enter, when you are seeing a client, when you are seeing a person, it's a customer, see beyond that person. See the people that can that can come after that person. Family members, church members, friends, club members. Just by getting that person, you'll be able to have referrals. Very, very important strategies you need to apply. So happy customers will refer you other customers. That's true. Happy customers. They may not be sad customers because if you don't do them, they will not refer you. The people I will never refer in my life. There are people I will never, people I have done business with, I will never, some of them, because my experience with them was not good. So I will never recommend anybody to them. If it's too urgent or there is no other option, I will tell the person, be careful, this person, look at what he did to me because I'm not happy about their services. But if I'm happy, oh my God, you must definitely recommend. Look at what he says. When the recommendation comes from someone who has actually used your services, it has an extra layer of credibility and trust. The letter clients make the best advocate because third-party claims of excellence carry more weight than self-promotion. Very, very important. It is, if, you are, if you are promoting yourself, posting adverts, you can be getting less results. But when somebody is not doing it for you, with no interest attached, no commission, imagine you are the one sending for Spartica, no commission. You're just doing it with your whole heart because you're happy, because you love them. People will be like, ah, this guy, why are you showing me this guy? You see, you see client telling you, this man told me about you, hope you are good, though. Say, yes, that's a recommendation. Okay? So, for most parts, customers are willing to refer because they know how important referrals are. And people like to help. No matter how wicked people can be, they still want to help other people who are in their business. They still want to refer people and say, patronize this guy, this guy is good, buy from him, or buy from her, or go to the office. Refer us. Very, very important. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. So, ask for referrals. Now, this asking for referrals doesn't really mean you must tell them to refer you. It's, they don't need to do that. By the time you build the, the four previous steps, this will be an, they will even be doing it for you by themselves. They do it by themselves, for you. Because you have offered an excellent services. You have been, um, you have been transparent, you have your integrity, you have everything that in, in place. All these things, these referrals will not be a problem. They will do it on their own. They will just do it on their own. I know people that are my, are my, maybe my people I work with now, I know people that I'm giving business now because somebody referred them to me. And then I discovered they are good. I kept the whole thing with them. So this is very, very important. Try to apply all these steps. So if I should go back to my slide from before the prospect and after the client, is I talked about decide the best communication skills for every client, or every prospect. Everybody has the best way to reach out to them. You know, if it's email, if it's call, if it's WhatsApp, if it's SMS. I know of a particular woman also, if I call her any time, I don't know if she doesn't pick her call. She responds to me on SMS, normal message, not even on WhatsApp. That's the way she responds to me. So I keep sending her SMS. Even this morning, I sent her one. I keep sending her messages. So discover people best way of communication. Some people is face to face, you must meet them before you be able to talk anything reasonable. You must go and meet them in the office. You must go and meet them in the office. I know, I know, <laughs> I know a particular man I was in business with. And then one day he told me, this guy, we need to see and talk. Let's plan this whole business stuff. And I was coming from the mainland to the island to go and meet him. And I was like, ah, this man wants me to come. I went there one day, I went to his office. I did not even see that. I said, guy, hey, what I want to see is because, please, try and be more active. Do this thing effectively. Try and be more active so we can get more people. He said, that's all. I said, this man doesn't know I'm coming from the mainland. Like, I, I stress my whole self. Enter transport, so stressful. And that's what he has to tell me. Why can't you come tell me on the phone or WhatsApp? That's what he, I, I, I not spent five minutes in that office I left. That's because that's the way he prefers. He prefers seeing me face to face and telling me than the WhatsApp thing. So he must discover that kind of money. If I want to send anything to him, I better go to his office and tell him about it than send him a WhatsApp or message. So he said, discover people's best tool of communication. That thing pain me that day, but I was like, where? What would I do, God? That's how life is. Some people love it that way. Some people prefer it that way. They don't want you to come. They don't want you to, some people don't even want you to, don't want to see you. They prefer call me. 
be very, so you discover people are different. So know how to communicate effectively. People are different. Now, that this same thing applies even in timing also. Apart from communication, in timing, some people, no matter how they want to, but they don't want you to come to their shop or to their office. They think you're disturbing them. So discover if it's a weekend, you will call them. Discover if you even go to their church. As I came to the church today, the church is fine, wonderful church. I forgot that is it. That's the best time for it. So discover people's different timing. Different timings are very, very, some people, some of them are bankers, very busy people. They don't have your time. So you can't even, so know the time you call them. Is it weekend? Is it in the evening? Is it early in the morning? Which one do I do? Just discover it yourself and study them also. So, uh, talk about provide valuable information. Beyond selling, you can provide other information of what is going on. Post news, post articles of what is going on. You might, they might see as a, this guy can always post information for me. Let me go and check him out. So, post information. I've discovered that people that whenever I post anything on my WhatsApp now, they are the first people to go and check it out. Because beyond my business, beyond real estate, beyond whatever I'm doing, I post other things. I post other valuable information. I post comedies. I post useful news. Like one day, Saturday last week, in I got Palace Way here, from early in the morning, as, as early as 6 o'clock, the road was blocked because a trailer fell down around Market Square site. So the Saturday was so busy in this road. I had to go to my Saturday post and say, please, I went there and said, if you are going anywhere today that is very, very urgent for you, and then you are passing through, I'll go, you better start coming out now. Yes, forget it, you are, you are, you'll be there forever. Some people took it serious. Some people saw it and said, well, if one of the guys called me and said, please, is the road still blocked? I want, I'm coming from, I'm forgetting the place, he said, I'm coming from Sulele. Is the road still blocked? Because he saw my post. So this same thing will make them feel like, let me check out this guy. And when they check out it, they might see my estate post and buy into it. So these are the ways you can post valuable information. So people start seeing you as a channel for information beyond estate, beyond whatever. The other things you are posting that is helping their life. I know a photographer now, the photographer, one of my friends, he posts every newspaper headlines for the day. That's why he posts every morning now. He posts some newspaper, Vanguard, this one, this, all of them for the day. So people will be like, let me go and check what this son is talking about on his posts. And then from there, they will see his business. So these are the ways you can see. Even WhatsApp now is like a way whereby you post something attractive at the end that people will be seen as a preview. But before they get to that thing they are looking for, they will jump some gutters of your estate, or your house, or this one, before they get to that place. So apply that strategy. No, it must not be long. That's why it must not be long. Me, I will not do it. Too. Me, I just go. Pa, pa. Look at how I will do it. I will pa, 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 pa. I'll be going faster, faster. I'll not even do anything. So don't, don't make it long. You can make it like five. You have posted one, two, three, four, and then the last one you post one kind of funny preview. Some guys are doing that now. Some guys, are, some guys are even using as far as porn. People want to go and say, who, who is this woman that is shaking her bum bum here? Let me just go there. As they are trying to go there, they are passing through estates, their business, this one before they get there. So try some things that are valuable informations. Now, like I said, don't, don't overdo this one. You disturb them and they run away. Don't over push. Don't overdo the follow up. Be persistent just for a while. Be persistent. No way to encourage people. No way to apply some more principles, more encouragement. Because some people are like, this place is still bushy. It's still bushy. Nothing is going on. Hey, that's what you think. Because they need encouragement. Come to the office. If you know that there's sales going on, check the layout. Snap the layout. This ethics is still bushy. People are buying you. Know? So they're like, oh, I'm even wasting time. So this is how to encourage them. People are buying. You think it's still bushy. People are still buying. I know, I know of a particular estate in a particular company I saw. Even when I saw that, I was like, this place is deep. Oh, right? They say it's good. Recently, that's the hot cake of that, that company. That people are just buying it because it's cheap. So some, sometimes some clients might feel, this estate, I don't know what's going on. Show them encouragement. Show them other people that are doing it. Testimonies of people, what is going on in the place. And then as I ask to be persistent. Then use less formal channels, you know, look for a way, text message, WhatsApp, beyond. Don't make everything too serious. Everything must not be serious. There must not be too much formal formatting before you market to people, before you apply and get something. You can use less formal means, social media, you know, comedy stuff, and have a rapport with your prospects. Not like most times, um, 
the other day, the other day I went for marketing and then it was it was a camera place I went to, and I've been there before. I've, I've purchased some things from there before. Really, I got there. I told him, guy, you know, he rely on you. are selling fast, fast. You are doing this one, doing this one. Better come and save money here. And I started a conversation. So it must not be I came from an estate, blah, blah. You can look for a way to enter people. You can even price their products. How far? How much is this thing? Uh, why is this thing this price? Oh, no wonder we're even selling this one for this price. You don't show your product with that. These are the ways to enter people. It must not be too formal or too official. There must be, you can relax. Even do you know that buying biscuits from somebody can make you say land of two million to them? People have provision stores, they have money they want to invest, they don't know where to invest it. You go there and buy biscuits, I mean, you sat down. How is business, man? How is everything going? Fine. This business you are doing is okay. I hope everything is going on fine. Yes. Do you know there's a way you can even invest your money and save your money for future purposes? So come and look at London and buy. That's the way you can do these things. Some of them, some of them are on lease in their land, the land they are using, they are renting the land, they are paying short rents. Because most of these people are not aware that, um, for instance, now some estates, you can actually own your own store there in your own land without paying for rent again. Let me give an instance now. We were marketing, okay, imagine Enugu phase one and there's massive development going, people are building there. Have you, have you ever thought, who oh, will say to these people that are, that are living here now, when they start living here? People that have that idea can actually have a plot there, where in front of their plot they have a small supermarket, where the whole estate will be buying from. Because they don't want to be buying from Abakalika and start coming back to the house. They can buy the estate. These are business ideas. They will not be paying any rent because it's their land, it's their house. These are people key in. So you can share them. That way you are a consultant. You can share them those ideas, okay? And then I talk about the five simple ways also to follow up even after you sell. These things can also apply even before you sell, okay? And I talk about say thank you. Thank people for anything. They come to your office, thank them. They send SMS, thank them. They make inquiries. Even I, I thank people for even trouble. I thank people for everything. I thank them for calling me to give me correction. I thank them. Thank them for everything. They go for inspection. You thank them. Let them feel comfortable to disturb you. That's your job. Don't ever make a client feel, ah, I can't call him and ask him this. You say I'm asking him too much questions. Allow them to ask you. Because at the end of the day, if you make a sales, that ends the whole suffering. So let the thank you come in. Check in on them. Check in on your clients. Beyond come and buy, come and buy. Check in, know what is going on. How is business going? Is everything going fine? And then keep lines of communication open. Let there be means of communication. You know, send them some other articles that can help them, things that can help them even in their business. Keep it open. And then think of a second sale. Think of a way to make them subscribe, buy into another product, invest into another product beyond the one they bought before, they can buy again. Okay, they can buy again. And then referrals comes in, recommendation. They start recommending you to people. They start referring you to people and they start making more sales. So thank you so much for staying with me. Yeah, I have questions, that's what I'm saying. If you have a question, it's there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next Sunday, Sunday again. And I won't call you. You blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> that is not serious now. The one that cheated me. Oh, the time. Time. you see, that, that's, that's actually the thing. Um, look at my advice to business people. No matter where you are, it will be connectivity. I have this mentality of my phone cannot be off or I must not be without my phone because something can come in, okay? Something can come in at that particular time. Even if you're in church, it doesn't mean you should pick your call in church or whatever, but your phone should be on. The people that they, ah, uh, why do they keep it in the house? 
I don't think you've been inside the church. I have a way of. Yes. No, you take it, take it to church next time. <laughs> okay, charge it. Maybe that's it. But beyond that, what I can say about the man is that maybe he hasn't decided to buy from you yet. Because you actually played your part by calling back. And then the next one also, you call him back again. So he's left for him. Because forget about the things we're talking about. He, he must not really work for everybody. He's still left for the client to decide. No matter your encouragement, no matter how you are meeting up, some people still have their own issues. And then it also comes in a way, I have a particular slide that I had not put. I don't want to put that. There's a place to give up on people. Yes. When there's no encouragement from them. So I can't be the one always coming for you to buy into this thing when you don't even have any interest at all. Okay, it's not as if you have interest and you don't have money yet. Or you, are still, you still need encouragement, you still need conviction. You don't, you don't even have interest, no, you don't even have to care about the money, no conviction. So those people, you just learn how to leave them and focus your energy on other people that is giving you the same vibe. You understand? So when it comes to the phone aspect, one thing I do even while I'm in church is, let's say I have a call. Of course, I can't pick it in church, let's say because I may be connected. Let's say I have a call. I have, your phone should have a wall of, once you end any call, it automatically sends a message to the person. Yes, no, Fine, I'm in church, I will call you back. That's good. Most times I just caught it and said, hey, Mrs. please, I'm in church. I'll talk to you later. So it depends on the person. It depends on the people. That's, that is how it is. So everybody must not really work that way. Some people also have their own issues, you know, of not making things work out fine for, um, when it comes to these transactions. But that is just how it is. That is how it is. Everybody is not the same thing. That, that, that is also why I talk about the means of communication and the time for communication too. This thing is not, it's not even me. This is the things you discover by yourself. You understand? At that same time, there are still people that that same weekend is their best time to communicate to them. So it's about discovering which one is the best time for this person I'm working with to know how to reach out to them. I know a particular man, okay, he gave, he, I, I did a job for him and then he gave me a check last like Sunday. There was a mistake in the check. I went to the bank. I could not cash out the money. That man, the only time I was still meeting making is on Sunday. Every other day he's busy because he's a banker. He's a bank manager. I can't meet him again. So it would be useful, useless for me to be calling him and say, sir, let's meet, let's meet, let's meet. I'll be disturbing myself. I'll be disturbing him because I know he cannot work. He's, all, he's only available on Sunday. So it's about you discovering your prospect or your client and then know how to follow up with them. That's why we're discussing all these things. So, but the thing is that let, let, it, let it not actually disturb you when you see people do that way. Because, like I said, everybody is different. And then let it just be, because that's how it happened. That's how the person wanted it to happen. If the man wanted to buy from you or wanted to actually take it serious, he will make out time for you and speak with you no matter what, no matter how busy they are. Because remember, these things they are buying, yes, we have our own profits to make, we have our own money to make. But it's not as if they are doing us a favor like that. We also didn't name a favor. But the one bringing this business to them, too, it's just because, wait, wait, the land you buy, I might want to live inside the land. I might want to have, is it my documents? Is it my name that being on the documents? It's still your land, it's still your money, it's still your name. So you must also make out time to get into it if you want. So that's how this whole thing works, also. See this here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. 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 There are people like that. They want to see, they want to know this guy. Yeah, he has come. Let's see how long you do this thing. But then we keep coming over and over. This guy is actually serious about this thing. So it happens. 
Like I said, also, people are different. Some people will be like, this person is disturbing me. They'll block your number. Because they're disturbing them. Like I said, following them up is when you have actually checked what is keeping this person from buying. Is it money? You must check it out. Is it money? Is it encouragement? Is it no sin? There is no conviction. That will decide whether you're following them or not. There are people that you cannot even still follow them. They don't want it. They don't want. So you must first of all discover why is this man not buying now? They know how to follow them. So that is, it works. It works like that. Everybody has different things. Yes, sir. Okay. Too often I made the I have a, I have a write up for it that I did not put, but I have it on my head. Now, 
I don't, I don't know how other people do their own follow up and marketing, but I have a way I do my own thing because I have my spirit has a way of leading me. Okay, there are people who say that you know this person is like bomba to bomba until they are convinced. Why there are people that they are reserved people? The moment you push them too much, the moment they now close the whole door for you and shut it down entirely. So it's about also listening because most times, even all these principles we have here. Exactly. It's not a one-way thing. It's a guide that they have, they have checked it that, okay, majority of people, this is how it happens for them. So it's like a scientific guide that, okay, majority of people, let's say 70%, this is how it happens. But it's not like a 100% guarantee way. You must allow your spirit to guide you. Naturally, I feel I shouldn't call you for something over and over again every time. I should give you some space and then call you again. If I really want to commit, you understand? Because me, I know the way I live my life too. When you call me too much for something, I'll block your number. Don't disturb me. Allow me to make my decision. So if you can give me some space, maybe two days, three days, one week, you come back again. I'm like, ah, this guy is true. That reminds me. You say, I should do this in a bit. I'm going to tell next week I'll do it. Even that next week, you don't call me again. You come back next week and say, it's true. Let me even do this thing. But if you keep doing off to me, I'll just close the door. I see that you have an interior motive. You want to scam me or something. That's how my own defense mechanism will start working. So that's how it is. So we must let the spirit guide you. And then the people you are working with, the people you are, you are trying to do that thing for, observe them and observe them. Like you said, impression. You understand? Impression matters. Because I know people that, I know some people, let's say, for instance, when it comes to my media business, I know people that, I want, that wants me to cover maybe their weddings, document their weddings. They want me, if it's the bride. It's me they want. But the husband has somebody somewhere else. So there's no, there's no flow because there's an external force. So I'll have to convince the husband before everything starts working. If not, I can't do anything again. You understand? So this is how you must observe people and know what is the issue. Like I said, if it's money, this one, it's not to flow to them. But let your spirit guide you and then observe the person you're working with. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know somebody who now uh, and it's not like that he doesn't have the money at the moment. He has the But what is keeping him? So that bomber to bomber thing is what my mind is beginning to tell you that about the thing. About the thing. Yes. Yeah, you know, like I said, you know, that is this, what, this is that's what I'm thinking in my head now. This so place, place is on our our follow that guy. This place now. This thing also applies, you know, most times when you said they were traveling this uh in you know, most times, when it comes to real estate, also, uh, listen, you know, even the Bible says money is retained in the hands of strong men. So, rich people retain money. They can give you the want to give, but I mean, when it comes to investment, it's like you have to push it out. They don't just bring it out. So, they want to, rich people prefer what's my account balance? Okay, it's DLA, the day. Then I waste it. Or they have lost it. So that money is retained in their hands. The Bible says it's, it's, they have to be strong. So what happens is that sometimes this thing is a good thing for them, but they want to take their time. These people give things time. People that have this money, they have a way of giving things time. Let it just be. Let it be. Let me decide if I really want to enter this thing on their, on their own. So this is when they are follow up will come in. So what's going on? People are buying this thing. Look at you are showing them evidence of what is going on. You're showing them the current state of what's going on. So they're not like, let me just buy into this thing. And it happens. So some people like that. So because most times, imagine somebody bringing that 2.5 million to buy. It's not easy. They need that. They need that assurance. They need, they need that time to decide. If I'm, it's not this. This, this one now is not 100,000. It's not 50,000. It's 205. 2.5 2 million to bring it out to buy something. So they are trying to, because they know that if they move 2.5, they know how much remain in their account. No matter how much money, they still that if I move 2.5, now you go to the phone, you go to 80 million. So they are checking all these things. I'm telling you, they are checking all these things. I know of a particular brother that his account balance most times, that means how happy he is. Yes. His account balance, that means how happy he is. If he buys something, let's say he bought a car now or something, and money is down, he'll be very, very angry. Now, even the women like this, so they are them, 
I can't balance his down. He's vexing me. No matter what he uses for. So most people are like that. So they want to check. So some of them will be like, well, let me just bring this money a little bit. So if I remove, okay, let's say they have 100 million. They'll be like, let me get 1.5. So if I can remove 2.5 above the line. So let, let, let me now be having 1 million, 100 million plus 2.5 remaining. Like, that one is not their business. Though. <laughs> that, nobody's thinking about that one. Okay, so that's why you need to know where to now encourage them. This man has the money, he can buy. What does he need? He needs more conviction. He needs more conviction to buy into this thing. You need to show him proof of the one that he sold out. Okay. <laughs> That's a very critical state. So that one, I've experienced it a lot. It's a very, that's, these, those people are mostly green energy people. They want encouragement from those people. They don't want to buy and then have an issue. And then after telling them, she buy, I say you should not buy. They don't want that blaming. Of she be say, she should not buy. I can not go and call here. That thing, they don't want it. So one of the things you can do if you have the privilege and the platform is to the way you convince that person that she wants to not buy. Can you have contact or reach those people, that mother or that father, and meet them say, Alpha? So that's the sister saying, she told the sister, the sister said, It happens. And then most of them, prayers can cancel it. You know, prayers can break that stronghold. You pray about it. Seriously. Break some barriers about it. And these things start working easily. So, prayers, if it's possible for you to meet them, meet them. Okay. Yes. Okay, ima imagine, do you know that, do you know that it happens even in, it can even happen in marriage, a particular... That's nonsense. That, that's, that's when the person that needs education in real estate. <laughs> it happens. It happened like that. It happened like that. That, that did. It happened like that. Exactly. Sometimes people send the wrong people for inspection. Then, 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 then we can then you can you can apply upscaling to them. It's called upscaling. Okay, you said this place is bushy. You want the place that is more developed, bring out more money. Let's go. She said she See, uh, one thing that happens in this life is just people giving advice. Yeah. When, they, when you are convinced so about something, the eh? when you are convinced about something, no matter how the yeah. advice you are giving to that person, they don't care. Yeah. They don't care. I've been in, state of, in, in some things whereby my brother will be telling me, don't do this. I'll be like, oh, thank you for your advice, but I'll go do it. It's not my decision. Yeah. Understand? Well, Is that way? They will see that the person is doing them a favor. Exactly. Yeah. If you see how that person is doing that, uh, taking pride. That I cannot buy this one. No, that kind of thing. I always feel bad when somebody say my brother is coming to me. It's only one person I met that the, the man, he, 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 he was giving the land. He was speaking with the brother. He was light, light video. Mm -hmm. So he told the brother, he said, this is the form of buying. Yes. Then you want to corner him to show him another 
That's a challenge now. You have to know how to solve the challenge. Yeah. Let me let me show one, one way to solve it. One way to solve that challenge now is, for instance, I know Siplat now. Recently, we had a video I put on the group of the process of our estates. From us about phase one, when it was bush, fencing, development, building, and it the same thing. Those kind of people need to show such videos. You know what I mean? This thing that is going on. I mean, the people are going for inspection, not even the little. Mm. People are going for inspection now. This place we are going to now, look at this video, look at the phase one, look at how the place was before. That kind of, that kind of evidence mm. of the common thing there is good you before your color color eyes now. I mean, the thing is that I mean, I mean, It's true, it happens, it happens. So, there are so many things. So many things, it happens. Now. I know this one, our neighbor said, I have, I sent her to Ingo. The sister is staying in the and she's in the US. Mm. So, the sister went to the office, I think, for them to take her. I live in that town there. So, that's yeah. another example. Yeah. 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 But you know what to do with the person here? I will have even do video, I'll be calling her. Sure. Yeah. 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 And that day, the sister went. Mm. I went with another person who also want to buy land. Like, okay. Okay, Mr. Bright, come and take us for any announcement you have. And